to that. That's the uh, included alarm system arming that comes on the premium models. Um, so if I press the power button, uh, and there's a little blinking red light here on the TFT that informs people, hey, it's armed. Press the power button, you'll notice they blink again. Just saying, hey, no longer, no longer armed. Um, running light, so no, no power on, just the power button. You've got the, uh, the U halo on the front, that's it. And you got your running lights for your, um, your rear. Just like that. So this is your kind of profile with the bike off. Press the brake light, you can see it will, it's pretty bright. I'll show you the turn signals. So, front turn signals. LED all around. Nothing, uh, nothing to upgrade. There's your rear. Let's, um, let's get started up. There's your kind of default PFT. So you can see here, if you look straight ahead of my light, when I turn, nothing happens. And you see that straight white beam is just simply turning with the bike. But that changes when you're moving. I think you are going up a certain speed. Where to kick in. And it's hard to see with street lights, so we're gonna go to a, a windy back road. I'm not sure it looks like, but TFT currently is set to 100% uh, brightness. And you can see that here, this is 100% brightness. With the bike stop, you can turn the brightness down. Uh, and the gauges are also lit up. The blinking you're seeing is probably that these LEDs are running at 60 hertz. I'm also recording at 60 hertz. Maybe they're 30. And therefore, it's looking like they're flashing. They're not flashing. They're only flashing because the camera is refresh rate. But these are solid white. You have, a, you have a white eminence coming from the center of these bulbs here. And then you have a little bit, you have, and you have the actual uh, uh, gauges, levers are lit up, needles, and then you've got a backlight behind the numbers. But the actual parts of the Berlin built uh, RPM times 100 and power reserve, that's all, um, that's all dark. You can't see that. I can see it, but it's very dim. So uh, no backlit buttons, like some of the newer motorcycles you guys have on the streets. No backlit buttons here. Watch the front ahead of you though. You see that? You see that? You see the light? It's going a little bit too slow for my actual side to side. But what it's doing is it's basically modulating an array of, of, of LEDs and on both sides of that seven inch uh, diameter bulb. And it's, it's, it's throwing those, they're, they're deactivated when you're in this mode. It activates one side or the other as you uh, turn the motorcycle. And it actually does, um, it, it feels like it truly is adaptive, meaning it only lights up enough lights to, to make the horizon level on the white. If that makes sense. So uh, now we have the high beam turned on. The high beam is just giving me longer throw. It's not illuminating the sides of the road. So high beam, long throw, sides of the road, no improvement to the side of the road. So if you got deer, you're not gonna see them with the high beam on. It's not, it's not gonna make a difference with the high beam on if you have deer on the side of the road. But it does give you a longer throw distance for your lights. So right now, high beam is on. And let's do a little bit of winding here. So on, with the high beam on, you really can't see the adaptation a lot. High beam off, you can really see it. And this is what's going on a straight line. We're just dodging and weaving here. But you get a feel for how that's changing. So you're turning left to a corner, it throws that way. You're turning right into a corner and it throws that way. And it gives you a little bit of peak around that corner. I'm going to leave the high beam off, and we're going to come around a hill here and go up a corner. It's only about 30 miles an hour or so. Look to the right, you'll see that right throw is going to give us a lot of visibility around this corner. But it's not quite enough to really make up for having a good pair of like Clearwater or Denali lights. It's just making it where 
you know, it is it is throwing out a little bit to the left. Now let's do the same kind of turns here with our high beams on. So high beam on, you've got that nice longer throw. So you can see much farther down the road, but you can't see over there. The high beam is just straight out. Let's call it uh, you know, 500 feet or so. High beam on, I'm gonna do some left-hand turns here. And you're not really getting that pronouncement of that premium adaptive light with the high beam on. Uh, it's still working, but not working to a degree of or to the severity of if you had that light, the high beam off. On the corner here. So I would say though, for a stock, for a stock single headlight housing, there's lots of lights in there. That's not bad. Really, that's not bad at all. Right, do you agree? Do a uh, turn this off. I'm gonna do a U-turn here. This thing does not have the best turning radius. You've got to basically, you've got to basically put your. I mean, you can do a two-lane turning radius. Full. That's a full lot turn. But I had to put my right ass off the, off the thing completely. So we are um, right now. We're just cruising along with clutch pulled in. Low beam is off, and you can see that adaptive light right there. And if we go high beam, you get exactly what you need, which is more throw, which is perfect. So I would rate, I would rate this uh, uh, light. Now keep in mind, the all the R18s, even the non-premiums, they come with an LED headlight, but uh, only the ones that are premium package. Uh, you know, pure classic uh, bagger and transcontinental come with the adaptive LED light. So uh, that's giving you that array that corners with the motorcycle. I don't think it's gimmicky. I think it does serve a purpose, but if you're in like a hairpin corner, it does not go up high enough for your lean angle, even with this bike, which has, in my opinion, a very weak lean angle. So uh, like the high beam again, uh, you're also not going to substitute here for having a, a you know a pair of uh, Cristas or Ericas or Canali D7s. Those things just throw light everywhere uh, and are not DOT certified. So I'm going to high beam off here. We're going to go around this corner. You can see it throws the, the higher right light there, but there's still a bit of darkness. Do 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 the high beam on this time. Hard left. The high beam does not modulate, only the low beam adaptation does. If we have our turn signals on when we're driving here, you can see how bright that is. We'll turn the high beam off. Pretty bright. And then back to high beam again. Uh, I'm making this video because on YouTube there's not a single R18 night video I could find. Couldn't find one. So someone out there that's looking for this up, and you're looking for someone that's put a video up that is, didn't just get on a BMW demo truck or as a blogger and only got to ride on the bike for, sorry, mini rant. They only got to ride on the bike for 30 minutes. And they do a whole 20 minute review about the pros and the cons of the R18 by reading a BMW spec sheet. It pisses me off. Uh, here is an actual nighttime video, which you will only get from someone who actually bought one because uh, the demo truck is not going to let you take this thing overnight. So that's that. It's got here. And uh, go open a bottle of wine. How does that sound? All right, guys, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. And uh, this has been a, uh, a real BMW R18 owner's review of the headlights at night. Rock on.